share the link. Absolutely. I'll forward it to you like I always do. Yep. Okay. Have a great meeting, Meg. Angela, thank you for, oh, for everything. Sure thing. Take good care. You too. Hi, everybody. I'm going to read this statement now. Um, I'm convening the meeting at um, 331. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, GLC 30A, section 18, this meeting of the Participatory Budgeting Commission is being conducted via remote participation. And uh, I'm gonna take attendance now uh, and just ask everybody to individually say here, if you're here. Uh, John, I'll go in the order I see you. John McCabe, hand raised. Meg Gage, here. Uh, Liz Larson. Here. John Page. I think you're muted maybe, John, or at least your lips were moving, but we didn't hear anything. Muted. I think his mic may not be called. He's got earphones on and maybe the mic isn't connected. Yeah, John, we're not, your screen says you're not muted, but we're not hearing you. But we saw you nod, your, shake your head. No. <clears throat> well, we see you're there. But try to maybe, uh, yeah, well, oh, I think I heard something. You're there for a second. Oh, yeah. John Fenske? I'm here. Kathy Shane? Yes. I'm here. Great. Uh, let's do a, a review of the uh, agenda here. I'm just going to say, John, there's usually a, a choice of use your computer audio or use your headset audio or something somewhere. <laughs> do you see it, John? Can you hear us? Okay. Well, there. Uh, that. that should work. Yep. Thank Try you. Try to be fancy with these headphones, and apparently it does not want to cooperate. Well, yeah, sometimes, sometimes it works. Um, and yeah. All right, so uh, let's take a quick look at the agenda, and um, which we're right here. Uh, our, we have two goals at this meeting. One is to discuss the uh, terrific notes we have from the interviews of staff uh, and committee chairs, and then to determine how to use these insights uh, in, in affecting our uh, consensus memo that we're working on. Uh, we'll um, determine the minute taker. I'll, I'll be happy to take minutes this time, although I'm not gonna Great. actually write anything down during the meeting, but thanks to the video, <laughs> I can do that. Uh, we wanna approve the minutes and then discuss these interviews and then discuss the uh, implications of these uh, insights that we've gained on the memo and then topics that we didn't reasonably anticipate of which I have four. Uh, there was a suggestion from Paul that I don't want to discuss these now I'll just tell you what they are so you can be aware. Paul suggested that we update the council sooner rather than later to keep, rather than waiting till our final report, just to keep them in the loop and can use your guidance, Kathy, in doing that. Um, should we share all the meeting notes with everybody who was interviewed, I thought would be helpful. Scott Mersbach is still interested in an article. And then what about our public forum and meeting? And this one here may be a little, uh, maybe I'll cross that out. That may be premature. Any comment? And I have our final meeting. I, I've listed all the meeting possible meeting dates between now and when we have to get this report in. And there, I think there are only six more meetings, uh, unless we change our schedule. Any changes to the agenda? I have just a total. Um, if we're saving these, um, Sean's name is not spelled right. It's oh, thank you. Oh, right. There, the N, I, I do that quite often. I put the N in the wrong place. Yeah, I, I can, whoops. Just, Thank you me. can fix it later. I just thought yeah. if we were to keep a record of it, we'll keep it. Yep. Well, mango now. <laughs> I'll get it. I'll fix it. Thank you. Any other changes to the agenda? Um, okay, let's take a look at the uh, minutes. Uh, stop share. Uh, the minutes uh, have two parts. The beginning and the end are the actual minutes that John took. In the middle of them are Sean's interview. 
Um, um, so I wanted to see if people have any comments on the minutes in terms of corrections. Uh, I think we can comment on all of them. We don't have to comment on everything that Sean said that we, we may want to discuss in con the context of our core work, but just in terms of accuracy or things we want to point out. I have just a tiny typo. Uh -huh. um, it's under Sean's interview thing. It should be PGO, Parent Guardian Organizations. We do not have parent teacher organizations in Amherst. Okay, thank you. Where is that? Where, do you remember what page? Uh, I don't have them in front of me. Yet. It's on the first page of the no. section that's Sean's interview. Okay, thank you. I wanted to draw attention to page three and something Liz said that I think is important uh, to do at this meeting, which is the bottom of page three. I'll just read it. Liz, Liz would like us to decide during this meeting now, the 4th of March, uh, on the form to present our individual contributions to the discussion uh, of the report uh, of the memo at, at the next meeting. So at this meeting, discuss how we want the, our ideas about the final memo to be incorporated into ah, right. the memo at the next meeting. It was a little tr complicated, but I thought it was important and it's basically what we've agreed to do. I'm, I'm sorry, Meg, I was focused on, so it's PGO instead of PTO, and yep. you're saying, do we need to change, or were you just commenting on the, the point that I, I, I had Liz making in the minutes? You're talking to Liz? I'm talking to, I'm, no, I'm asking you about what you just said, that. Um, I'm not changing anything, I'm just drawing attention to what Liz said, which okay. is important for this meeting we're having now and it's reflected in the agenda. Right, right. That's all, I was, I think minutes are good to remind us not only to correct the typos and stuff, but to remind us of what our plan is. Um, I guess you can see that I'm getting more and more aware of the limited time we have and eager as Liz was in her comment to uh, move things along. So um, let's, all in favor of the minutes with that one little change of PTO to PGO. In favor, okay, I see hands, Kathy, everybody, unanimous? Yep. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great, we approved the minutes. So uh, now we're going to go through each of the uh, interviews, which I thought were really helpful. Uh, we learned a lot. Uh, but I thought we should, uh, my proposal is that we'll go one at a time through each one and first give everyone the opportunity if they choose to take it to make any comments just to be sure everyone has a chance to ask their questions or make their observations and then have a discussion on that, those notes, all of us together and then move on to the next one and after we've done the five to talk about them as a whole. I think if, I don't think that'll take that, it sounds like it might take long but I don't think it will. I don't think everybody will have to be wanting to comment on everyone. Does that sound like an acceptable process? Anybody object to this? I think that's fine. Right. So uh, what order, what would you, where would you like to start? How about um, Lynn? We start with Lynn and Paul. Does that make sense? Hey, I just was wondering with Lynn, didn't, Maybe we didn't, did we dis didn't we discuss the Lynn ones at an earlier meeting or maybe not? I don't think so. The notes okay. were from the 15th and we, did we discuss the Lynn one? Yeah, I thought we did. Yeah, I, I thought we had too. Okay. We, we'd looked over it. Okay, well, let's just see if anybody has any uh, to recollect, you know, to re remind ourselves of what she said of, uh, there's some themes in what she said that other people said as well. Uh, let's just go around and see if people have anything they want to say. Uh, John, McCabe, anything? Nope. Liz? Nope. John Page? Ka Kathy? Nope. John uh, Fenske? Um, I thought one thing that was important and that other people echoed 
is the challenge of survey data and encouraging participation, uh, making sh the challenge that the data is accurate and not just the most uh, upset people or the ones who, who always have a strong opinion. Um, that was a theme that I think came across in a number of these that the challenge of getting input that's balanced and informed. Any comments in general about Lynn's, uh, what Lynn had to say, if nobody has individual comments? No, and, and Meg, I do think we need to, we sort of should step through them quickly, but um, that is a theme, is a theme on who comes to meetings, who, who does public comments. Um, so it's broader, um, but I think it was in particular when and if we're writing up the um, document, the notion that any kind of survey, and I've been involved in many, um, has a participation bias. And the big thing that's happening, if you do phone, running into all sorts of problems. If you try to do you know, an online form, you have similar problems. So we shouldn't be thinking that there's some magic way of getting input from people we don't often hear from. I mean, I think that is, you know, it's not that different ways get more people involved without a doubt, but there's not a magic way. Um, right. So this is part of what we're observing now as we look at these uh, different points of view. John? Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, in all three uh, Lynn's comments and Paul's and also Sean's to a lesser degree, uh, I felt, um, how can I say, a lot of cold water thrown on my ideas about consultation and facilitation. Um, I mean, there was a good deal of, oh my gosh, we've got these procedures in place and there's information going out and we know these things and you know, let's not uh, shake things up too much. But I, I think they had some very, as Paul and Lynn especially had some very sensible comments about the limits of surveys and the limits of doing things uh, differently. Um, I would add to that, it's kind of a related concept that we'll get into when we talk about the format, I mean, the form that the final report will take, but it struck me that a lot of this hinges on what you mean by participation. Uh, I mean, it's, it can be a, a blunderbuss word and, you know, we started out with participation, just meaning this idea of the pot of money that people vote on, how it's used, and we've tried other things, but I'm just saying that um, I'm finding what, what Lynn and Sean and, and Paul say, make it problematic to engineer, as it were, new forms or better forms of participation. Mm -hmm. John? Um, it, it, yeah, I'm, in relation to what John is saying, though, I, I'm, John, you you can you you can say something different if you if you interpreted um, her name was Gloria that we interviewed. Yeah. Yeah. Um. No, C D B G um, chair. It was. There's there's very little participation. Uh, in C D though, from what I could tell. It is a pretty closed process. So, I mean, when people say, well, gee, I don't know what, what we can do. Um, Kale. She, was, Kale. she was actually, um, she, it, was, it was interesting because she said we pretty much fund the same, not entirely, but almost the same projects year over year. Other, I asked about other pro, other programs, do they, do they throw their name in the hat? They often don't. I think that there might be some recognition that there's, that, for new for new people to come in and, and request money it's going to take money away from some of their allies in another organization but it just seemed like an almost completely closed process and i asked her i wasn't trying to criticize, criticize her by any means but i just said is there any is you know do you see any advantage to trying to open this up and theoretically she sure she but but practically i don't see i don't see it at all i was kind of surprised the, uh, can I ask a clarifying question before I call on Kathy? Are you saying, John, that she 
didn't think it could be opened up or it shouldn't be opened up or something? I don't like think that. she thought it shouldn't be opened up. Now, she seems really, uh, I mean, I was, it was a re really pleasant conversation. She seems like a really interesting person. Yeah. She's been doing it for about four years. She's new. She was new to it when she came in. And I, and I think she became the chair. There was a much older group, not wow. to say that about us old folks, but there was a much older group when she came in and they slowly cycled off and she became sort of younger old hand that, that, that is now in charge. Um, no, but it just sort of seemed like there, there were, there was a, I don't want to say use a critical word, it seemed like there was an element of sort of acceptance for the process the way it is even though it's not really open to a lot of a lot of uh, new participants, it's just not. There's a, there's a set pot. Um, there are a, a lot of rules that that, that <clears throat> do not allow for for um, the kinds of things that we're thinking about in the, for the most part. But but not even there doesn't even seem to be room for other. I asked for this. Is ABC House ever put in? Nope. You know, I said, are you surprised that there are so many groups that don't put in? And she said. Yeah, I am. And I said, well, why don't they? She said, I don't know. So. Kathy and then Liz and then John. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah. So I want to just, uh, I want to respond to the, what I think there are two ends of a spectrum here. One was um, in the conversation with Lynn and Paul, it was more formal surveys, new, bigger ways. Um, as opposed to are there ways we could improve participation um, in various ways? Because I think what we heard um, in certainly in the CPAC discussion um, with, with uh, Sarah and, um, and Ben were uh, a receptivity to our, our thinking that what would happen if the town had an information session saying these pots of money are going to open up on such and such dates, here are the kinds of things they consider, um, get your ideas in, and we could help you figure out which, where you might fit, and then we could direct you in the right way. There was a positive response to that, and Sam had went a, a step further saying, you know, some things might fit better somewhere other than CPAC. So it might be good if the departments had uh, uh, an information session at some point, big departments, conservation. Because what they pointed out with CPAC, which is a bit like CDBG, they have earmarked ways they have to spend money within some limits. And so if you come in through their door, you have to fit. And then if you fit, probably the best route would be going right to the historic commission if you're historic or right to conservation to help them figure out what else is going on because they would want an endorsement. But people wouldn't necessarily know that. So they were open to leaving the open period open longer, thinking about getting fact sheets out, thinking about a bigger kind of thing on where are there opportunities for this um, where CPAC would be one of the opportunities. So, um, so they were particularly open and interested. Um, so I think maybe what I th think, and, and I wasn't in the Gale interview, so Liz, I want you to speak too. I think CDBG is a particular, it's, it is $840,000, which is not a small amount of money. CPAC was 2 million this year, which is a bigger amount of money, <laughs> a lot bigger, but you know, the, the um, they probably haven't been thinking about how long an open period do we have? Um, and CPAC has been, they were really feeling it was too short, mm -hmm. you know, and what kind of guidance or help if we get an inquiry from someone who's never been here before? How would we find those people? So we found a group that was starting to think that way, you know, a Facebook page. So, but right. I, I think otherwise, they also said we fund a lot of money goes to the town and to a few big right. groups. We don't get a lot of outside, but they weren't close to the idea that it could be more open. Liz and then John, or John, can you wait? Liz had her, yep, yeah, Liz. Um, I just wanted to, I, I don't like using the term that they are closed because that to me suggests that, um, that other, groups aren't open to 
that they would not be open to other groups applying. Um, it's the way I understand it, it, there is a set group of people, groups that always apply and it's not because no one else is allowed to or that anybody else is discouraged from it. It's just people are not, they don't know about it. They're not aware of the process. And I'm sure that uh, the committee would love to have more applications. And I'm only, I mean, this is my, my personal experience over the dinner conversation, um, knowing that they are open. Um, and so I guess I just didn't like the use of the term, it's a closed process because it's not a closed process. It's I didn't just mean not, it like that, but they just sort of, it just sort of seems to I, I realize that, but just like for the record, I mm -hmm. didn't sure. want it to say sure. the, that the PBC judges them to be closed, so. Does everybody understand the no, no, and, and, and they also said that they don't want to be closed. I mean, it's, it's, they just said it sort of happens that way and they, they're not sure why. Yeah. John? Sure, so I think um, if we're gonna talk thematically, um, then for CDBG, I think the question John was trying to get at was, what was the value of participation and what is genuine participation? By um, That came about because, for example, the public hearings are very well attended. And the format typically is, everyone who would like to talk about this proposal in support or against, um, now speak. And they'll get a dozen people sometimes. Say uh, an example, maybe the Amherst Survival Center has a proposal. And they'll say, anyone here to speak about the Amherst Survival Center, um, please, please give your comment. And would having 25 people instead of 12 say, yes, please fund this project be of any value to the committee? And the answer was, I'm not sure it would. Um, and I think that was the that was the point that we were on was was um, what is participation right? If twenty five people still read the same statement, yes, I would support this project. What value does that bring versus bringing new voices into the room or different proposals? Um, and I think that was more like as Lynn was saying, the nature of participation, just numbers of the same copy and pasted email, for example, doesn't have the same message as new voices in the room. So I think that's what we were trying to get at in terms of what is, what participation are we trying to garner? Can I just, John, I just wanted to pick up on what you said and I want us to file this for later reference. I loved what you said about what is the value of participation and what does partic participation look like? To me, that's like, boom, Team for our memo. Boom. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There's something Paul said that I think is a, obviously we're jumping now toward comparing them all, not going one by one, which is fine. Um, he said something that was a new idea to me in this conversation, which was if the town had more communications capacity, they could motivate a lot more meaningful participation. So for example, going uh, to community groups that are typically not participating and so on. You know, we all know what communications is. I thought that was an interesting, and of course that costs money, but so does almost, a, you know, a good a professional survey is very expensive. And Meg, that, oh, I don't know anyone else. Um, yep, just sorry. one of, uh, so I again, I'm okay. being influenced by this, the conversation with Sarah and um, Sam, you know, they've been thinking through how do they communicate and do more outreach. So one of their thoughts was come to district meetings and, and the, what would they come with? You know, if they refer them to the big plan that's up on that thing. So we said, do you have a frequently asked questions? Do you have a fact sheet? And they said, no, we probably, that would be good to have, you know? Um, so the no, you know, we have volunteers on these committees. I'm talking about one specific one that are willing to do more. You know, they're not necessarily willing to go around knocking on apartment doors, um, but that is a different, a different kind of communication um, using 
that I don't think that it certainly does not um, lend itself easily to resident capital requests or to CDBG. Although CDBG could be similar, like once a year, they could send someone to district meetings to say, what is CDBG? Do it four months before the period for applications comes in. Um, but if they're also looking for the nonprofit, you know, things like ABC House, you know, so it won't necessarily reach that. So Paul's point about who are we trying to reach, which goes into the value, value of participation. What does it look like, John? <laughs> you know, the, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a, it's a really big question. Um, yeah. On, on what does it look like? Because uh, the, whatever you think about the library project, I'll just make one more uh, observation. We had at last night's public forum, which was to ask questions, you know, just any question you have about what's being proposed, uh, what they heard. There were 85, 90 people in the public. Wow. Okay. Um, a handful of them had questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you listen, Liz? Oh yeah, I was. I was one of uh, one of them, and yeah, most of the were comments attempting to phrase it in a question. Right. So, so a handful had real questions, and you know, handful, when I have have a handful, maybe ten. Um, the library had very smartly lined up quite a few people who work for the library who could tell us what terrible working conditions they have right now. And Lynn finally said, I'd like to know if any of the other people in the queue have a question because we would love to hear those comments, but would you send them in? So it was like, so I was trying to figure out of the, and one is, was the lead fundraiser for the project, you know? So we got interested parties, but I'm not sure it succeeded in reaching what we wanted to, the intent was a bigger discussion about what's being proposed and things you might've heard and don't understand. So Liz, was that, you know, I mean, it was somewhere, but somewhere. Yeah, you know. I, I, I only listened to the first hour and 10 minutes or so, um, but there were some questions and it is, I, I think people, and when we get to talking about how we would want to solicit public comments. I think a lot of people have already made up their mind. And so they needed an outlet to make their statements. And that was my takeaway from it. Um, I think there were also people who came in late and didn't hear that the first part of it was supposed to be questions and then comments. So right. I was being generous in my fellow. And I, I just, just one, one final thing so people know, this went on for over three hours oh, and there really? was there was no there was no presentation so all of us the council people who came were silent so this this was meant to be you all come um so so it's what what's participation and what does it look like is an excellent question yeah. Yeah. the value of participation and what does it look like yeah uh, meaningful meaningful participation john oh I, I, as a former library board member yeah i can you're absolutely right. I mean, people are just sort of, for the most part, people have already made up their minds one way or the other. And what they, what's frustrating is that participa participation then just sort of turns into, it's not that different from the way people participate in, in our letter writing and op-ed page in, in the Gazette. People present the same arguments over and over again on, on opposing sides. And, and it gets a little frustrating after I said, but, um, <clears throat> You know, I mean, I did not see that, but I, I'm, I, I pretty much know every argument by, by heart at this point. <laughs> some of them are good and some of them I don't find persuasive. It just depends on where you're at. I think I'm the only person in town who's completely neutral on the library or, you know, like, anyway. <laughs> John? Sure. I, I don't want to backtrack too much, but I don't want to backtrack too much, but um, I got to be in the CPA conversation and the CDBG conversation. So one comparison which I want to draw was that C, uh, CPAC often gets more proposals than they can fund, but
but not always. In fact, last year with some creative financing, they were able to fund every proposal they received versus Gail shared for social services with the limited CDBG funds. Sometimes they get four or five times the requests than they can fund, um, at least in dollar amount. Um, and so she said, so there was a difference of opinion there where in CDBG, they said, we would like new proposals, but if we're already getting way more than we can fund, what does that look like? Versus CPAC said, we actually have some room to grow. We had a year where we could fund every proposal without even knocking one out of the ranking. So that was a distinction too, in terms of CPAC being more op uh, open to increasing the proposals. It also has to do with just the amount of money they have to give out, I think. One of the uh, things that changed with the new government was that town meeting uh, was able to shift the budget around and often moved more money around in the social service areas. And partly because people understood it. They understood what uh, the social services are, uh, but that didn't happen in some other categories where they didn't. Um, and the other funny thing that always happened in town meeting is we'd have these discussions about $30,000 for a translator uh, or something in social services and multi-million multi dollar school budget would be approved without any comments, but the people, yeah, anyway. Um, other comments? I think it's, it's helpful to go back and because we didn't really look at each interview in detail if people have other comments about um, any of the particular interviews. Any more comments on any of the things people picked up? Um, well, Sarah made a, um, after she, the edits that she and Sam made to my notes were to, in large part, turn them into full sentences since I don't tend to <laughs> write, write <laughs> notes, but, uh, you know, to clarify in a few places. But when she sent back, she said, interesting project you've got here. I'll be, I'll be interested to see what you're able to come up with. Um, you know, so, so it was, I thought that was a useful comment to hear because as I said, both of them are looking for ways, I would say it's, it's something we have written somewhere in the memo already of uh, a more regularized open period, maybe synchronizing them so that they're all open at the same, you know, to the extent you can submit a proposal. Um, well in advance, they were saying they want to well in advance let people know it's going to open up, you know, put the word out. So on information sessions. Um, so this, these are generic kinds of things that I think could work for anything. Mm -hmm. Um, the thing I learned from Sean's, the resident capital proposal, which I found to be an eye opener, because I never thought of it as this, is it's problematic if it has anything to do with roads or sidewalks um, or crosswalks, because there's a big plan in the sky. And if you don't fit the big plan in the sky, um, that even if the money, people decide it's a good idea, the big planner who controls the money may or may not do it right. because it wasn't part of the big plan in the sky. Um, so I think it's a really bad idea to have something called a resident capital proposal that you can award it and say good to it and then never do it. I think that um, just gets people frustrated. So on that, they would have to, I think they're going to have to figure out what kinds of proposals where CPAC already has to figure that out. Um, what kinds might fit, <laughs> but, and I didn't understand that as much uh, um, in a generic way, but hearing Sean say it gave me a sense of the internal dynamics among town staff. And now, I'll, add, I'll add to that, that people do care a lot about sidewalks and crosswalks, because uh, it has to do with safety and kids and bikes and walking. But no, the, I mean, yeah. Even when you get something approved in the budget, like the East Pleasant Street sidewalk survey, some reason it doesn't necessarily happen. That's what I'm saying. Matt. I know, I'm giving it as That's, an example. Right. It didn't Sean was happen. using that. That, And then we went back. I actually went back because I knew that proposal to see if they dotted all the 
I's and crossed the T's. It had to fit the transportation plan. Well, they made sure under TAC, it was the number one priority. So it was the transportation plan and it still didn't get done. And it's not on the list I'm to, for tonight. So but it's, when not, I, but it's in the budget. That's what's really strange. Well, it's, it's a line item in a budget with those words next to it. But it, it's, so what I'm saying is that if it's a fungible pot that can be spent any way the person who's in control of the pot is, one shouldn't raise expectations that the resident proposal right. will, will ever see the light of day, especially if it, even when it gets positively voted on by everyone who's reviewing it and it gets put as, as line item and doesn't get spent. I think that's, a, a way of uh, frustrating or angry. I mean, you don't want, you'd ra I'd rather not open up participation than do it that way. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm underscoring what you're saying. Yeah. That East Pleasant Street sidewalk is very much an example. John? Yeah. Somebody Go ahead, John, you John, first. John McCabe and then John Page. I think oh. that's the order you put your Yeah, head. I mean, we, people, <laughs> people in my little neck of the woods down here by Speedway have been uh, trying to get a crosswalk forever. Uh, but serving on the Joint Capital Committee, I, I think it's a function of the, of the enormous expense involved with paving. A, a, just just going up Pomeroy Lane, it's, it's ruining my car. But to, to go from the, the speedway to the top up by the church, it would probably be a two or three million dollar paving project. It's, it's just cost so much money. There's no way that they can meet these needs. And we see that all over town. The, the, the roads are falling apart. Yeah, and John, I, I didn't mean to say that this is just whimsical. You know, Guilford told, oh, Guilford told us a mile of roads is a million dollars. So um, that's a kind of a shocking number. <laughs> how many miles? And the sidewalk study, he had told us to put a sidewalk, it would be three to four hundred thousand dollars. So I can understand that when you when you start down a road, you want to finish it if you can, you know, I mean, rather than. But, but I'm just saying that that was an eye opener to me that some things could be requested, viewed positively, and then not and happen. Not funded. Yeah, and so it should be circumscribed in such a way that people understand. Uh, right. I either agree. The, yeah. Yeah. John Page and then John Fenske. Or do you, do you still have your question, John? Yeah, I, I just thought a theme that's going to continue to come up is expertise. Mm. and staff support. So um, with roads and sidewalks, it's still not clear, but I think the assumption was that because engineers are involved and there's a, there's a detailed complex matrix of funding and process behind that, part of that's gonna be left to the experts. And so that's a theme that's gonna come up and again and again. And with CDBG, the one thing that we found is, um, Gail noted that residents a group of residents that weren't organized as a nonprofit or something like that would not be able to submit a, a proposal. Um, and she also noted that, and it says it's on the website, if you're considering proposing, um, get in touch with Nate Malloy, the town staff person, because the reporting and the application is set up by the federal and state government and it's rather complex. So that's another scenario where if you had residents propose something, even if it got that far, um, you really need a level of expertise. So then as we continue our work, it's going to be a question of staff support. And is that feasible? Because you need an expert to work on roads and sidewalks with you. You need an expert to work on demographic data for reporting for CDBG proposals. So I think that will continue to come up. Yep. John? So to, <clears throat> to these points, um, it strikes me that there seems to be a good deal of interest in uh, par, uh, DPW type projects, uh, roads, sidewalks, whatever. And um, on the other hand, it seems to be its own separate domain. Uh, maybe not for us, maybe there's not enough time left in uh, you know, the, the life of this particular iteration of PBC, but perhaps uh, public works could be looked at separately as its own uh, participatory 
uh, effort. And so, for example, uh, maybe there are some smallish projects, uh, 300,000 to a million that are near the borderline. And the, the, the experts who know about these things are somewhat indifferent whether something is above the line or below the line. And that's where citizens could participate by saying, oh, we really want this one. And that promotes it to be something that gets done this year or the following year. I guess the general concept would be look at DPW projects on their own as something that could uh, take more participatory input in some way to be invented. Mm -hmm. The trick would be that um, the most people, you know, people would vote for the thing, like everybody on East Pleasant Street, I don't know, is the, we've talked about this a little, that the balancing what people understand and want because they live near it versus what's actually the most important for the public good. Some of the infrastructure things you don't even see. Um, but it's, but that's a really interesting idea to say, these are the things the DPW has on its uh, should be done list and see how people weigh in differently. Kathy? And, and Dave mentioned, um, Sarah mentioned that there is a form. I meant to attach it to my notes because I've actually seen the form. There's the see here, click problem thing, but there is actually a form to suggest a project idea and it can go to tack. So it could be a sidewalk, it could be a crosswalk, it could be a bikeway. Um, what's been interesting about that form is what happens to it if you happen to use it. <laughs> you know, <we're laughs> the first time I heard it existed, I said, really? Um, and a person, you know, gave me a link to it. And because it was someone um, here on Summer Street who wanted to get um, a speed bumps, you know, or, or something. Um, but so I, I love the idea, John, of DPW Public Works look at separately the notion of opening it up maybe once every two years with this is a, what's on the list, send me your ideas, something like this. Um, and there's a, tonight's, um, this is probably overkill because it's such an ongoing story. Guilford has um, almost $2 million for road repairs with town money and state money. And what he wrote up is this may or may not follow the five-year plan for roads. <laughs> and the past couple of years, people have said, ah, is there a five-year plan for roads? Like which road is gonna be done next? So people could say is my, and he said, well, there sort of is. Well, could we see it? No, nope, can't see it because it changes all the time. <laughs> But, but it was an interesting comment that it might or might not. But I think that's partly what people are asking for is if, you know, is my street even on the list? Or is my crosswalk, um, the crosswalk down on 116, I have been at TAC meetings where people talked about needing one and uh, slowing down on the thing. And parents came in where their kids were almost hit or one child was hit and it was ranked really, really high. And then they were saying, what does it take to get a crosswalk? You know, what does it take? And so, but, but I think yeah, it takes money. It's not as expensive as an intersection or a sidewalk. Um, it's, yeah. paint. it's paint, right? Well, it is paint. No, it's, it's, it's uh, cutouts also. Yeah. But, you know, the one that got installed up here on Coles Road where um, the new apartment buildings are, um, I asked that went in so quickly and I said, how did we do that? And that was part of the developer. The developer had pledged to do that. So they did it and it went in really fast. Um, so I'd love to know how much it costs because it's a really nice one with the blinking light. Yeah. But, but I love the idea of DPW being a, could you periodically and let people know, you know, give me your ideas, give me your priorities um, yeah. um, and see what's, what's on the list and what's not on the list. It's, is there really a list? <laughs> well, th no, there definitely is a list. It's just uh -huh. you may not know what's on the list. There is a list. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I really, I, I really sympathize with your point of view that to get people excited about a project that's, that will happen at some point on their block or wherever um, is going to be discouraging because I think the reason the list changes so much is because the roads are so subject to 
you know, water main break or the things that, that just destroy the road. And then, then it becomes a priority overnight, you know, other things get bumped. And, and or a tree blows over. Yeah. You, you mentioned uh, see, it, see it, click it. I've used that a couple of times. It works really well. Then they come back with other things in your neighborhood, tell you about other things that have been reported. I, I think it's great if that model could be adapted. Yeah, I like to see it. Your know, people don't know enough about that, but peop other people when I was uh, running running for council said they got their pothole fixed because they use that device. And someone else says, my pothole will never get fixed. I said, have you ever seen this thing? You know, like take a picture of it and send it in. Um, it's not just important people who get their potholes fixed. It's um, so I, so I think, I think not, I, I think this is, people may not even know that exists or how to use it. Um, so one of the things, whatever we do with our report, it might be a way of highlighting where we do have opportunities mm. and there, they might be more hidden that there are forms, there are places, um, you know, this new engage Amherst webpage that's been opened up. It's sure. not clear that it's not, that was brand new news to me. I didn't even know it was in the works. I don't know what the plan is for it. And that's where Sean has put up his, see how the four projects play off against its tool. I don't know whether people know the tool is there. Well, Does yeah, I, I, actually that's not a minor point. I went all over the budget pages, you know, and where it lists the budget and so forth. There was no link to the engage page with Sean's model. He had to tell me it was there. Yeah, that's a really good point that you can go all around the town website and things that should be connected to other things on the website just aren't. Yeah, and he's doing two, two seminars on using it, mm -hmm. but two people told me they couldn't find them listed anywhere. I mean, Lynn is announcing them and I go, well, it must be on some calendar. You know, I, but, I, I, I used the search function and it didn't show up. You know, yeah, I tried I model, too. I tried budget, no, I none of that worked. Well, there's uh, one on Saturday. I'll send everyone the link to it if you want. That's the one I was trying to find and I couldn't, it literally, I thought, is this a different organization? Is this the bid that's doing this? So it's a different web. I mean, it literally looks like it's a different organization, not the town. No, I, I just I think the general point is there there are a lot of people in town hall doing great stuff and 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 the communications folks have done great things on that engage Amherst part but you know how it all fits together and how people know about it this is an important dimension that I don't know needs to be thought about more systematically in some way yeah I'm I'm just looking at it now um, the the town website and also the town mobile app and there's just no, there's no integration. There's no, it's the, I think Bram has done a great job in making it more user-friendly than it has been since I moved here, but it still has a long way to go just, you know, in terms of easing people into participating. Right now, our front door is not easy for people to use. And maybe and that's the front door something even, to comment in our Yeah, front door even on calendar, because if you don't happen to do the right uh, collection of calendars, you don't find a meeting, you know, so you're right, Liz, you know, I think I'm, I'm in this meeting, how come I can't find it, but um, so it's, some of these are brand new, and you can see that they might be not be integrated, but I think we, I think we should write up that in a nice way that some of these new things need to be built on and made, made more user friendly. Um, yeah. And this may be what Paul was getting at in part when he said we one thing that would help a lot is more communications capacity, which the website is one of the most obvious examples of. John? Right, but it was interesting that Paul put it in the form of, you know, more resources for the town. And then when we talk about, say, this kind of committee or a future iteration of it being a resource or interns or academics who volunteer time being a resource, uh, he kind of threw some cold water on that saying, oh, but that takes more staff time to coordinate what they're doing and so forth. I mean, it, it just sounds like we're, we're blocked. We can't, you know, get improvements unless there's more money and we don't have the money. Right. 
So our meeting is time is uh, a little over half over. I want to make sure we get to the second big discussion. Before that, does anyone have any other comments about things that came up in these interviews that haven't been said yet? Just to note them for the minister, John. Sure. John. So another kind of big bucket, which I think Kathy raised, was priorities versus decision. Um, and I think if we think of even the council town manager structure, council sets a list of priorities and the town manager has to figure out how to accomplish those. And I know Gail said for CDBG, people don't often participate in their priority setting meetings. Mm -hmm. You know, those are less attended than um, the hearings on projects. So that's an area where more people could come to. What are the priorities for the year? Um, and so that could be true across the board. It's less of the traditional PB being involved directly in the decision, but there's lots of avenues to influence what the priorities are. Even this infamous DPW list, there's lots of avenues, but people aren't getting to use them. So if we can figure out a way to connect more people with the access points to identify priorities, then those priorities should be in good government reflected in the decisions that are made. Wow, that's interesting. I like that, John, and it's- Really interesting. You know, it, it, you know keep these thoughts, I'm, I'm taking I, my kind of notes, but um, it's a section that points out there are these moments, and again, people don't know about them. So how can we get, with not a lot more staff, so it's not a staffing issue. It's just how can we say in a central place, um, a combination of each year we open up for ideas in a few different places. Each year we have a priority setting. Here are the dates, you know, and, and, and have it on in an easy to find somewhere if you're searching for, if I want to, ex I have an idea for something. Um, how do I, and when, how do I, when do I, or I'm hoping someone has an idea for something. Um, yeah, it would be nice to be able to do that. I don't think, you know, and the contrast with what you just said with CDBG, CPAC said they never do that on priorities. You know, they have to spend a minimum of 10% in three buckets. And then they're basically waiting to see what comes to them. And that's their constraint. And they make judgments on the value. They said they could have policies, you know, that this year we want to do more here or more there. They haven't. The council could, with public input, say that we wish you would do more on affordable housing, you know, spend more of the money here, or spend, but the council hasn't, it could, you know, so they just were saying that just has not been the practice. So there isn't a point on CPAC that you've just described that CDBG has. There isn't, there, they just don't have that. Um, let's have a brainstorming on what we, if we only got the proposals, what would we like to see? <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing that uh, hasn't been mentioned, I'll just quickly mention that came up in both Paul's interview and Sean was uh, both of them were very uh, said fundraising or bringing in outside donors for projects is very doable and they do it all the time. Um, that's something I know John uh, McCabe and I are interested in. And uh, I regret we haven't had the time or maybe the appetite to think that through, but that might be, and I, I certainly don't think we can go out and do it right now because the time that we have it, but that might be a recommendation for down the road. Um, and some of us have a lot more experience than others in that so that, um, anyway, I'm just, they both were enthusiastic. I just think it's an important hook to put in, to put in, even if it's just a vague line about, to, to get people's juices flowing. I mean, we have a lot of academics in this town who know how to bring in money. You know, we could, yep. we could do that. Yep. I just heard, yeah, there's so much, you just have to do the research. This is sort of unrelated, but it's for the town. I just heard that the Massachusetts Department of Public Health gives grants to towns and cities 
for co-responders, social workers who co who respond with the police, like they fully pay for uh, hmm. co-responders. And uh, maybe everybody knew that, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. Well, see, that brings up an interesting point. In order to effectively do fundraising and grant applications, that really needs to be somebody who, that's their job. And so we're getting back into the staff support of, of such a program, which, you know, idea, I think that's great. But I just know from, from my experience, um, yeah, you, you need to have people who are on top of that and are looking for it and, and following through on everything. So that, that would be another down the road when we've got all this staff support to do it, <laughs> we can add that, but. It's a job for sure. Yeah, but there are a lot of, there's a lot of wealth in this town. I'll just say there's tons. And uh, anyway, so it's just something to put in the back. It's not for this, something to work on right now, but it's definitely, I think is John and I may be the only two strong advocates, but. Well, Meg, if, if you found that it would be worth you uh, sending a link into the Public Safety Committee, um, because one of the issues is, you know, I, and I'm hoping they already know it, they, the police do have a big grant that is, is an ongoing federal grant around this that, that funds people. But I didn't know Mass, I didn't, I didn't know the Massachusetts Department of Public Health also has them. Um, one other thing just that Sam raised that had never occurred to me. Um, and I don't even know whether it fits, but we have properties, meaning the town of Amherst owns properties that are not currently being used at all and or are being underused. Um, and uh, we've just done a capital inventory, meaning we the town that shows you all of those. So he said, what about soliciting community ideas for how the building might be used. And so he has the South Amherst School mm -hmm. and would love to see a community center with arts and workshops and rental spaces in there. And then that mentioned the North Amherst School. That's a different kind of uh, piece that the town could do to get ideas um, where the old Hitchcock Center, which is falling down next to the common school is a town owned property. We have a list of them. Oh. So, I mean, but it was an interesting outside the box because it wasn't CPAC, although CPAC money potentially could be used if it's a historic building and someone says it's historic and important to renovate it to be used in this other way. So I think his mind was going toward, and maybe there's funding to do that, but he clearly has some ideas personally on what to do with a piece of prop with a property. <laughs> yeah. And has no nowhere to send his idea, was it? Where where would he send his idea to? <laughs> um, ah, that's actually an interesting dilemma. If people come up with creative ideas of any sort. Where do they, you know, where's the place to bring them? Anyway, if uh, people are ready, let's shift to the second part of our agenda, which is reflecting on uh, how this conversation we're having in these useful interviews are going to uh, influence our memo in our report. I mean, not just the report and the memo, but our recommendations. Where, where, where do we want to take this? And what Liz said at the last meeting, a key thing we do at this meeting today on March 4th is to have that discussion. So, uh, Kathy? Well, I, I've had one thought, uh, particularly after I heard Sean and then CPAC. And as you know, I did the first jump in and try to draft something so we'd have something to react to. That was great. I, well, it may or not be, I'm ready to rewrite the whole thing other than, you know, <laughs> I think some of the recommendations about opening it up, keeping it up longer, using CPOs, using district, those all apply, you know, but reorganizing it. I don't think it's possible to carve out any money on any of these. Um, so there's uh, somewhere along resident capital, could we say up to 50,000 a year and there would be a commitment to do it or to some piece. 
I think for different reasons on those, that that is not possible. So I would remove that idea from, my thought would be, I would just take it out of there. Um, you know, a, a protected pot of money for people. But that doesn't mean there's not money to fund resident public ideas, you know, so the, but it wouldn't be a designated pot of money. I do like the, um, Liz, did you raise it when we talked to Sam? I couldn't, when I looked at my notes, one of, either you or John said we had this idea of you come in through one door where you send in your ideas and then we figure out, oh, that would fit over here or that might fit over there. I think that's a good idea. Um, you know, some central flow where you could come in through the other door, you could always come in through the other door, but so I think that's a good idea that it might give rise to more uh, resident public generated projects. But I personally think carving out will not and cannot happen in the foreseeable future um, with these big projects starting to move um, where Sean's little what if we try to do all four of them puts every operating budget on a diet that they can't live with. Um, you know, there's just, we're so squeezed over the next five or 10 years that we're not gonna be carving out money. So I just wanna make sure it's the carve out that I'm talking about, not that these processes couldn't work a lot better. So that's one thought. The second is we should have a longer section that has all the thoughts we just were talking about. Mm -hmm. Better ways of integrating things, finding things, um, where there are communication, letting people know where they can send things that are, look, we discovered things we didn't know existed um, and it shouldn't be so hard. So that's a, a, a it's, maybe it's communication, but it's organizing things in a way that people can find them. <laughs> So that was just my two thoughts. We don't have a section that talks about that as, as a, and it's a finding, I think, that we're uh, doing. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's make additional, just brainstorm comments about the memo and then try to pull it together. I have one suggestion, which is inspired by what Liz is pulling up, what John Page had said of, uh, not necessarily a long and meandering, but some kind of opening section that reflects the ch general challenges of, you know, what is participation? What is meaningful participation? I'm just trying to look at, find where John said it. Um, well, I'm not gonna find it, you, but um, some, re some reflection on the insights that we've gained that are uh, about the, the cost, about uh, the challenge of people weighing in when they actually, only when they care about something, uh, the difficulty of measuring opinion, just it seems like we've made some observations that by outlining them briefly even demonstrate how challenging this uh, topic is. I see Holly's about to land. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Liz? So building on that, um... Um, what if we structure it, the memo, in a way that we, there's a section like the opening section is what is the value of participation? What does meaningful participation look like? And then we have a section on just brief, like um, here's, here are the, the areas where we already have participation opportunities in Amherst, I'm saying opportunities. And then we have the section on here are the challenges that are faced with these various opportunities and here are the challenges that could be faced trying to move forward. And then the last section is actionable ideas, things that concrete well things, steps that can be taken <clears throat> right now to lead us to a place in the future that can build on other steps for the future. So kind of, you know. Great. That kind of, really well what am I thinking of? That sounds great. What do people think of that out five card outline? It's great. Go start with the general I, and work to the particular. That's the way to do love it. Love it. Yeah. 
Could, I like it, John. Uh, could we, yeah, could we take uh, kind of the 50,000, 100,000 foot view for a moment and ask ourselves, um, first of all, are we still thinking that there's going to be uh, a public forum or some kind of direct from the public feedback? Or are we just, are we in the end game here to creating a report that we hand off to town council and that's it and town council decides after this what goes on? So uh, second, right. excuse me, second 50,000, 100,000 foot question is, are we going to try to, as it were, accomplish or establish anything in what we give to town council? Or is it really a, a collection of ideas? We've organized things. We've said, this is what we've looked at. This is what we think is feasible. But town council, if you want to do anything, you know, you have to make decisions about this. This is, I, I'd be curious to hear what the rest of you think. What is the overall purpose of this report or memo that we're, we're working on? So I've always understood that our purpose is to look at whether or not participatory budgeting could work in Amherst, not to design a program to make it work, but whether or not it could work. So I'm imagining this memo as here's our research, here's what we've looked at, here's what we conclude, here are some areas where a future structural committee who's setting up such a program could take and run with, but we are not, so that's why I don't, you know, I don't want to shut the public out in this, but I don't know if, if we have anything for the public to be giving us feedback on because we're not setting up a structure. So, so that's, that's ask, not what can, I can we put off just for even a few minutes, if not till the next meeting, the question of whether we're going to have a public forum? Because it seems, based on what Liz just said, that'll grow out of what our report says and what, what we're recommending or not recommending. In other words, if we don't have anything we need feedback on, uh, we could give a report. It's, I don't know, it just seems a tad premature. Um, <laughs> I like talking about, John, though, the purpose of the memo. Um, but let's discuss this however you all want to. And I just okay. asked, you said there were five parts. I've only wrote down four. I put so the value, value, the value, value. Do you want to do the, you, I have the value mm -hmm. participation. What does it look like? Oh, I was that the second one. I thought it was value, but what does it look like as you add as two? Okay. What are the opportunities? Well, I don't know if there are five. This is just what I wrote down. And the opportunities now. The opportunities yeah. Challenges and actionable ideas. Okay. Okay. Because I, I heard four. Um, and I just, I just want to say on actionable ideas, I thought it could be when, when you made that big category, Liz, I really like it because I think it's what we can do now over the next few years. And these are these make what we've got now work better and then yeah. getting ready for the future. So it's just two parts, um, you know, that we're, and, the, and what we could do now, and we should sort of take, I would love it if we, if we implemented some of our ideas and we said four years from now, let's talk about what happened because of that. You know, did we, mm -hmm. you know, did, did, did some new ideas come out of this? Some people that we had never heard of, got together in some terrific projects, whatever. Um, it would be nice to sit back and kind of look at it. Yeah. John? Uh, well, okay. yeah, there's also the possibility that some, uh, what's the right term? Um, you know, some money could fall from the sky or some, you know, somebody with deep pockets could say, hey, I really like this idea. And yeah, we should have things that people can vote on. Mm -hmm. Or I don't know, or John is able to convince a local academic to, um, you know, to, to really uh, get on top of this. Uh, we, we should, in other words, we should be open to the fact that if money were to appear or somebody who's willing to work on this, uh, you know, wholeheartedly full time or whatever, it, it, could, it, could, it could present an opportunity that Paul and the council would want to grab. Yeah, and, and um, the thing about the academics, I mean, at this point, I'm so glad I'm not a full-time academic anymore. Or, well, never really was. I was an administrator. I'm so glad I'm not a full-time academic now because they, they are forced to be so entrepreneurial that you don't get to stay if you don't bring in money. So I'm wondering if there's 
you know, there's a lot of people in that political science department over there at UMass, the enormous group. They need to do things, you know, and maybe someone says, hey, wait a minute, this is cool, I could do this. Maybe, I mean, that's, that's what I'm kind of hoping, you know, that we, we get people to think, how can I get involved in this in a way that helps me as well professionally? Because they have to do it, they just have to. We'll see. So um, just going back to the memo outline, do people like the outline that Liz? I do. Yes. I saw a lot of smiles and thumbs up. Great. Um, do we want to, I want to do want to come back to the question of whether we want a public forum or not, but I really want to see if we can pull more together around this uh, memo. And if we want to try to have some kind of fleshed out outline, not necessarily but for the next meeting to start looking at, and maybe we could divide it up a little so Kathy's not. I'm not going to do this one. Yeah, I'm okay. No, really, I know because it's hard. It's hard. Um, I think there are parts of the old one that could be copied and pasted into actionable ideas, mm -hmm. uh, but um, it's, I often tear apart a first draft and throw it on the floor. You know, so it's it's not problems. And there was one year, I just quickly tell you, I just couldn't figure out how to write this particular thing. And I thought I was on a deadline. My husband was away for three days. He came home and found me. I hadn't eaten. I was, I don't know what to do. And he said, let me take a look at it. And he said, your beginning should be your end. And then I think it would work. And he took the first and it was perfect, but I couldn't see it, you know, so I couldn't. So I think- Very I th trust you. What? So, no, it was really, he said, what if I take the first 20 pages and move them to the back? And, uh, ah, it works. Um, but in any case, um, my thought, Meg, you said we have six meetings left. Well, yes, I'll show you. Um, no, no, you don't need, to, I'm just thinking that. If we, if, we, if we meet every two weeks, starting March 18th, April 1st, April 15th, April 29th, May 13th and May 27th. We maybe don't want to go till May 27th because that's three days before this where our report is due. Uh, that's six meetings. So what I was going to, where I was going to go with that is we don't have a lot of meetings left. So maybe um, if people have a, do any of those sections or subsections particularly appeal to them, draft something so we could come together and instead of having one person try to do it, um, you know, and then and, and it could be super messy, you know, at first where we just say, you know, here's under the value of participation or what does it look like, you know, that we take the thing we've got now, anything that's useful, pop it in, write more. It's, it's a thought of a way of getting quicker yeah. to a working document that we're really calling a first draft. Right, Liz? So I, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but um, I I will volunteer to um, draft it if what if everybody can be assigned to send three or four sentences answering each question. What is the value of participation, and what does partici participation look like? And then if everybody sends those to me, then I can put them together in that section. The other ones about like what our current opportunities are and what challenges. I think that that we've had enough of those conversations and I can pull enough from the document that Kathy did to have a working draft of, of those things as well as the, um, the actionable ideas because we've talked about those enough. But it's the first two, your thoughts and feelings and takeaways. If oh, people listen. could send those to me, I can put them together. Thank you, Liz. That's all, fantastic. It's really, I'd be happy. With the caveat that I actually have jury duty Monday before our next meeting, and be crazy. That's going to be. I'd be happy to. Does everybody agree to send three to four sentences on those first two? Yep. When do you What's want the to second one? Each, I, each sentence. Two. Each on, each, each on question. What? Huh? So what, what, on what? What's the second one? That so the first question, um, send me three to four of your thoughts on what is the value of participate participation. 
And then secondly, send me three or four sentences on what does meaningful participation look like? And I stress meaningful. And you're talking, you're talking um, still pretty much in the abstract. These, these two things are- In the yeah. abstract. Yeah, I have, I, have, I have some background in this stuff, so I would be happy yeah. to do. Yeah. No, I like that because in, you know, we should be, well, you're the writer, but by asking us to do that, we can be as succinct as possible while capturing capturing the big ideas. I, I like this a lot. Yeah. But I also think we're not going to end up with, you know, 24, 25 different ideas of what meaningful part. No, right. there are five or six core ideas and each of right. us is focused on a different one, so. Liz, do you want some ideas on the challenges? I was gonna offer to some of that together. yeah yeah if you can bullet point some challenges too um but so I, think, I think we've really identified some big ones um deadline yeah deadline um weekend before our next meeting really not sooner Was you can send them to me meeting? sooner if you want but the deadline is the weekend before all right <laughs> So, so, so like 10 days from now, something like that. Um, so wait, what, today's the fourth? Our meeting. Okay, is so yeah, by, by the 11th, by next Thursday. Okay. And then that gives me a week to pull it all together. But I'm not gonna work on it till the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but if that gives us time to be late. <laughs> Are you doing criminal or civil? Because if you get into criminal trial, <laughs> you're... Oh God, the last time I actually, I didn't have to go, but it was for a bar. I, I showed up and got to excuse because it was a bar fight. I was like, I don't want to <laughs> two meatheads going at each other in a bar. I don't need that. So. Okay, so um, now we're going to talk about things that, um, uh, that haven't, uh, that I didn't think of 48 hours before. Paul suggested that we should give the council a, a heads up either with a short um, verbal presentation uh, working with Kathy. I'd be happy to do that. Is there someone who'd like to do Excuse it? Excuse me, Meg, um, are you talking about the note he put into the email to you and me? I can't remember where he said it. Well, he said, okay, I'm gonna read it. I don't think it was sent. My only concern at this point is whether the town council is on board with where you are headed with your efforts. Kathy can guide you on that. For some, it may be news that you shifted from a fund that would be allocated by a participatory process to how to engage people in broader community outreach efforts. I did not read that as an instruction to make a report to them. I read it as ask Kathy what she thinks and consider yourselves, have you gone too broadly? Have you strayed from the pot of money idea that people vote on? So um, why don't, we if, have a conversation about that at our next meeting. Um, I interpreted that as with Kathy making a short presentation about given COVID and given the realities of the budget where we're, but you didn't. No, I mean, it, we can send it around. I just don't, he's not asking us to make a report. He's just asking us to ask Kathy if, if well, maybe if she says so, yeah, maybe we should, but. Okay. It's, okay, it's not so, an instruction to, to go to town council prematurely. No, I agree with, with you, John. So uh, do we want to discuss this now, Kathy? Because there So of I, I have an idea that might address exactly what you just said, having read that, is we have a five-part outline, okay? We could say, you know, in three sentences, uh, given COVID, given the restrictions of town, we've moved away from the formal participation and we've learned a lot and we're working on a report that will have these five sections. Okay, I'll volunteer to write that and send it to you all before uh, the middle of next week, John. And, and we could decide, and I could talk with Lynn whether we just wanna put it into the council readings for the next meeting, as opposed to ask for four minutes. So people would just get a, um, an interim heads up from the PB chair, you know, whatever that is, you know, so it doesn't take up anybody's time, but they just know that we've done a pivot. Okay. Um, the reason I'm rushing a little is I really want us to finish on yeah. time. And um, yep. 
Does that sound like a plan, John, that works for you? John McCabe, did you mm -hmm. have your hand up? Oh, just, I'm just wondering, Kathy, um, maybe this would, maybe we'll talk about this next time. I mean, how, how, um, how, how seriously do you take this whole thing? Because you would be the, the, the logical person and once we're done with the report, to sort of say, this is an issue that I want to continue to talk about on the town council. I mean, you, do you feel that way about it or not? Or we can talk about it next time. I don't care. Talk about that next time. That's a different yeah. conversation. Okay. I think that's a really good topic though to talk about. Make a note. Actually, I don't, I'm gonna be watching the whole video. So, okay. Um, I suggest that we, John? I was just gonna say that even if it's to revisit it later, we do need to address our charge in our report. So we'll, we'll just make sure when we go through that we do that. Good. Agreed. Agreed, yeah, very good. Our charge is very specific. So we will have to address that at yep. some point. I don't think it's gonna be too hard because everybody's extremely aware of, they're probably gonna be grateful that we're not proposing you know, the 200. <laughs> Meg, if you write up this thing that we can present, there's a second clause in that, participatory budget or other ways of participating. So I just think copy and paste that whole sentence. We weren't, the, I was there writing that and I wanted it to say participatory budgeting and the, the Charter Commission insisted that it be or other because there was so much controversy about it. Uh, I'm just saying yeah. copy and paste what John is saying. That's our charge. We have or. I agree. <laughs> totally have, that's the out. We have yeah. an or. <laughs> the out clause. Uh, they're going to be grateful, you know, believe me. But anyway, uh, I mean, they wouldn't approve if we had said we want $100,000 or something. But anyway, uh, we'll discuss at the next meeting um, what I write and uh, what Kathy's role might be going forward. That was a good, another big topic and a good one. I think it would be nice to send, as a courtesy, to send the people whom we interviewed all of the interview notes, taking Sean's out from the minutes since making it a separate. Do you think that's a good idea? Well, at least a thank you note. Well, we, I think we did thank you. Well, a thank you note, but what about sharing as a way of keeping people might be interested. I did thank Sean and I th also wrote a note to Paul about how helpful Sean was, but I didn't um, tell him what let me just, I want to think about that because I'm trying to think about what we wrote up. Okay. And I have no problem with the, with Sean and CDBG seeing what CPAC said. I'm not sure, well. Why don't we think about it? Yes. Yeah, maybe not. And I, I would want to really and really look at word choices. So Liz's sensitivity on is it closed or is it, you know, be really careful on our words. Right. So yeah, that, I don't hold that one against me. I wasn't no, 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 I'm just saying that, you know, it's one thing to have these as an internal and a discussion yeah. on how things work, and another thing to suddenly send a batch out to Lynn, to Paul, to Sean, you know. Well, yeah. especially since they weren't informed before the fact that. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm so feeling they're all informed that they were public documents. I'm not pushing this. I just wondered if it would be. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling a little squeamish about it. So let's. Yeah, we're not going to do it. I have an alternative suggestion, which is that we could send these people a copy of our final report. I mean, Lynn and Paul are going to be seeing it anyway, but maybe the others wouldn't necessarily look right. at the final report. Well, we're, we're not going to do it. I was just asking because I thought it might be community building, you know, spread the word of what you're all thinking. Not going to do it. All right. Uh, Scott Mersbach still wants to write his thing. I think I'll uh, call him and tell him we're working on it. And um, we should have a memo very soon. And we're looking at, you know, I'll just smooth it over it's, unless anybody objects to that no i the, the, i i'm always in favor of keeping scott at arm's length yeah i'm actually i've mastered the you have to remember he really respects off the record and background and uh he's totally professional that way so then i he means well he means well it just doesn't always turn out well he does mean well and it doesn't always come out well 
All right, everybody, let's see. I'm looking at the other, these are the other things. Um, uh, is there any public comment? I see no participants, um, so there couldn't be. Um, actually, there is one. Is there anybody, but I don't know who it is, but is there anybody, Holly, are you there? Holly, Holly's, you, she, she never came into the meeting. She's out in yeah. Hinterland. Oh, okay. but, no, she is in the meeting. She's in both places. Oh, there are eight participants, yeah. It says we have eight participants. Well, yeah, let me I'm, ask, is there anyone who, public who would like to make a public comment? I'm just looking at attendees, it's Holly. Yeah, this is the way that my students attend my class. They put up a picture and then they go play. No, no, basketball. I'm just saying that Holly is out there also. Is she there twice? We have eight participants. Uh, yep, yeah, she's listed in attendees and in our group. Okay. Okay, that's why. Okay. So, so she, she sent a note. I'm, I have no audio or camera. I'm in the participants room if someone wants and knows how to you're the host meg you would have to bring her back in if you click on her name you can bring her into the room i didn't i didn't know that until just now let's see there she is <laughs> so she'll be here in time to vote yeah, to just the meeting. <laughs> trying to bring her in but move holly bowser uh well we're about to um Okay, there now she's an attendee. Sorry, Holly. You want her? No, you you want her? Bring her from attendee into us. Oh, I thought I did. Okay. Well, uh, now, anyway. now, no, you moved her, you moved her out. You move her in. I'm looking at the attendee list. You want to click on her name? You're the host. I can't do it. Um, right. I might make you host just so you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Promote me to host. Um, host. Oh, All right, I'm going to make you host. Um, you can just promote me to host. Yeah, I become I'm host. clicking on it. Now you're host. Anyway, uh, I think our meeting is just about over, but um, yeah. and I don't see her. Do you see her anywhere? Yeah, I am allowed to talk. Hi, Holly. You can unmute. I brought you in. You're muted. So maybe it's not working more. Uh, promote to panelist. You're all the way. Ho Holly is now joining, but rejoining she, as a panelist. She's muted. Okay, we're going to give up. Hi guys. Hi, <laughs> I've been listening. I have this weird setup where I have two screens. If I open it on one screen, I go as a participant. If I open it on the other screen, I go in the right way, but I have no camera or <laughs> so I've just been listening on one and watching on the other. Sorry. Holly, just for the notes, what time do you think you joined? Oh, I joined I didn't join till like about 4 30. My other meeting ran late, but it's okay. I'm just I'm three minutes this time. I just wanted to. Did you, did you capture the Liz all volunteering to rewrite the entire? I, I captured that part. Yes. Okay. Good. And, that was and, that was the most important thing to hear. <laughs> and you got your homework assignment. I did. I wrote my questions down. I have them written down over here. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for the technical difficulties. <laughs> okay. So I'll make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all done. This was good. We got through our agenda. I make a motion, Holly. <laughs> yeah, that's adjourned. <laughs> all right. All right. Yay. All in favor. Yes. All right. Thank, Thank you, guys. Bye, everyone. Uh -huh. Great meeting. Good all right. meeting, everybody. Thank you.